Hi there, welcome guys to another video. Um, this is gonna be the hat light installation video. Um, so it's pretty simple. The first thing you gotta do is take your hat and put it on the light. <laughs> Like always, first thing we gotta do is open him up. Then remove your wave trigger and um, take out your speaker. And then also just to be safe, I will remove your barrel LEDs and you're gonna have to remove the barrel wingtip hat light button. And then depending how your wand looks on the inside here, if you got one of the barrel wire covers, you gotta take that off. Ideally, we remove everything, including the wand board. But if you're lazy like me, I like to just put this tape here just to hold it down and out of the way as we will be flipping the wand back and forth. Okay, guys, let's go from the easiest to the hardest. So the easiest thing to replace first is this hat light right here. And we're gonna do that by removing this screw right here and then pushing the PCB board aside. You're gonna see that there's another screw that you need to remove. And this thing just pops right through the hole. Now take your replacement one and pop in exactly as it was before. This one's gonna be a little bit more snug fitted. Just go ahead and you know, apply a lot of pressure. It will fit through. Yeah, that's sitting all right. I already weathered it a bit, a bit. That's why mine is a little dark here. And screw it back in. Reseat the PCB board. Secure it back in. And that's it, you're done, easy peasy. Next, we're gonna remove this fake hat light. And to do that, you're gonna need a drill bit that is 25 64. 25 over 64, can you see that? Right there, that is the perfect size for what we need to do. Another thing to note is that everyone's wand, I'm sure is modded a little differently. Um, and it probably looks a little different inside depending on how many mods you've done. So some of you might have that little clear plastic piece in there. And some of you might have it completely removed. And obviously having this clear plastic piece will affect, affect the thickness of this body inside. That's why I included the spacer here. So with this hat light, if you have the clear plastic piece, you can just go ahead and slide it in. Otherwise you can put the spacer on. And if you don't have the clear plastic, put the spacer on like that. And then there you go. It'll have the right amount of clearance uh, sticking out. It won't stick out too much. Okay, onto the drilling. Uh, like most things, you're gonna wanna take a small drill bit and put a pilot hole through first. I'm just gonna eyeball the center. And what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna put kind of like a, maybe a small little hole so that my small drill bit won't slide off as I'm trying to go through the center. Close enough. Now take your 2564 and just slowly go at it. Okay, so I forgot that. Uh, my clear plastic piece here, it was broken before and I glued it back together. As you can see, um, it's all shiny, that little, that area here. And so I wasn't able to push all the way through when I was trying to drill. It just bent the clear plastic up. As you can see, it broke exactly where uh, I broke it initially when I was installing the bar graph. I think I showed that in my other video. And I'm glad this happened. This is a good learning lesson to all. Where, if you remove the vent, like I did, where did you cut? How much of it did you cut out? So in this one, it was just a clear piece. I cut out most of it, and it was just um, the piece going horizontally like this, and it was connected here to this piece here, which is needed to hold the bar graph down. 
uh, yeah, I did mention this in my other video that I made this mistake before installing the bar graph. However, in my other wand, I still had this piece right here. And that gave it a lot of strength and that held the piece down as I was drilling. So I was easily able to drill right through the wand, right through to this clear plastic piece, no problem at all. So go take a look at your wand. If you got at least these two sections like that, you should be able to drill right through it. Otherwise, if this piece was snipped off, then you might want to be careful and you might end up like mine. So this is what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to unscrew this vent light and then I'm going to remove the clear plastic piece by removing the screw here. So for this wand, I'm just gonna say screw it to the clear plastic piece and I'm just gonna go without that. And then now I'm just gonna go th through it as well from the other side. Just very slowly and very gently. Just cleaning up the edges a little bit. Then we'll do a test fit with the hat light. Okay, that one fits through perfectly. Good. I'm happy with that. So this one here is going to need the spacer since I don't have the clear plastic piece anymore. And side note, if you're wondering about the bar graph, what am I going to do about it now since, oh no, this piece broke off. Um, I'm just going to probably put some silicone paste on it or some hot glue just at the edge there to hold it down. I did that with my other one. You know, when I was trying to figure out the bar graph video for you guys, um, that's when I cut the wrong spot on the clear plastic piece by mistake. And so you can see there, that's just some silicone paste that I dropped in there. And it's, it's still, it's nice and soft and comes off easily if you need to, but it does a good job of holding it down. So if you ever made any mistakes to your wand, hot glue or silicone paste. Okay, so for the top hat light, there are three different versions. You got the popular Afterlife version or Superhero Pack. You have a white one. I believe it's uh, Ray Stance on his 84 pack. You have the top hat light that goes on like this. This is, I believe, Venkman 84 or 89 pack. I'm not sure which one. And then the company spacer that goes with it. And it's up to you if you want to use hot glue or super glue. As you can see, I used super glue on this one when I was testing things out and I couldn't get it off. It just would not come out. It's stuck in there pretty good. For the Venkman version, there's the bottom insert. The LED goes in there. And then they sandwich between the body like this and like this wand. If you have the clear plastic piece removed, the spacer fits right on top of the insert like that. So what you can do is um, super glue these together and then put a bit, a bit of super glue on the rim and then just go in from underneath. It will also be handy to have some files on hand, preferably a rounded one, just in case if it's not perfectly rounded. On this one, I was able to drill it perfectly. I had no problems putting things in, but I was just trying to put in this insert here and it wouldn't go through, not perfectly. So I just followed it down a little bit and oh, that seemed to do the job. Yeah, I could probably file a little bit off, a little bit more on the inside there, but this is this is fine for now. Okay, so that goes in underneath, and then the Venkman. Just put a bit of glue as well, very just a little bit. You don't need much, and this snaps in. So I know that this one here is going to be my afterlife version for sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it permanent. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of super glue on the edge. I don't think it'll need much. They fit pretty, um, pretty tightly. And then a little bit on the edges here. Now always do a test fit first, okay? Push it in as all the way as, you can, as much as you can. 
make sure that it looks good and it's nice and flat if it's not flat that you probably just need to um file off something inside the hole that's kind of preventing it from sitting perfectly square with the wand so always do that first before you make it permanent Okay, and I'm just gonna hold that against the body until the super glue settles. Okay, for the LED, take the short LED. That's just gonna drop right in that hole. Push it all the way in as much as you can. Might've been easier to put the LED in first and then glue it. And then, I don't know, maybe a hot dab of hot glue small amount of hot glue should be fine so let's just pretend I did that replace the vent light holder and the vent light itself if you need to and then for the connection we're gonna get back to that later on let's just move on for now and I just kind of say you never know what you're gonna get on my other one I drilled a hole right through right through the clear plastic piece nice and easy pretty clean I thought I felt confident about it and to go ahead with the video and then when I do the video here you know, everything, of course, goes wrong when I'm actually demonstrating it. But that's just how it goes with some of these installs. So I hope this doesn't discourage anyone. Okay, moving forward to the LED and the push button on the wingtip. To make our lives easier, we're going to remove the barrels inside. So pry off the spring. And screw this. And gently lift that up. And as you notice, I already had the fake wire removed. I did it on the wrong wand when I was testing things out. So I'm gonna do in this wand, except this one already broke. And it's being tossed around and this just broke on its own, but I think I can demonstrate it still. So, okay, so it came out like this. So this piece was connected with it like that, okay? So you see this little nub here? <clears throat> All you really have to do is just clip it off. You can just stretch this up and then clip it off underneath or just cut anywhere along this wire piece like that. Right there, you can cut along where this broke naturally. And then this piece just comes right out. And then for this piece, it'll be easier if you remove everything, including this LED here. So as you can see, I have a custom one here, but if you have the stock one, it's the, the piece is just glued on and you can just rip it off. Okay, so I removed the tip here. I'm just gonna slide that out. And I'm gonna slide this piece out. And then taking this part off, nothing to it, just gonna cut it. It's getting real messy on my table here. And you stretch it out a bit and get it as close to the bottom there as you can. So I'm just poking it through, trying to get drop into the little space on the inside. I just kept poking it, bending it around. There's a little rubber piece. There's a little post in there that was kind of blocking it from easily pushing it down. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it just fell right out on the other end here. And that's how that looks. Okay, once that's done, um, we're gonna be using this hole, by the way. You can take a look inside the barrel first to see what that looks like. Do examine it. There's a clear space all the way through to the front here. Flipping around on the back, we're gonna drill a hole right in here. Whoops, that's too big. Do not copy where my hand is. Please be safer than I am. Okay, so now how do we get inside here? This is the part that's gonna be more complicated. There's been several ways that I've seen online on how to do it. Um, in all the methods though, we're gonna to have to remove this here for sure. So we're gonna to have to dig that out and unscrew the screw underneath. You can just use whatever method that you did when you opened up the bottom of your wand as well. So the same, same technique and then unscrew the screw underneath. As you're unscrewing this, if your piece is ending up opening like this, there is a, some glue 
and debris that's preventing it from coming out. Yeah, so once I cleared the debris with some tweezers, the screw appears to be able to uh, come out now properly. Yeah, there we go. Now back to the many methods I've seen on how to modify this. The first one that leaves you probably the, the cleanest look here as, um, as close to stock as possible, other than this screw hole here, is to split apart. That will require you to move a screw here, 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 and here. And then I believe this, the two piece, the two halves are super glued at the front and the back. And then um, I don't remember how, but you guys somehow removed the ring. This is probably the most difficult part from what I've read, uh, taking off this the front piece here. And I'm not sure how to do that. And although it's cleanest, it's, it's it might be hard to put it back together and have the seams fit perfectly like it was before you open it up. Also, I'm still gonna use the wooden grip here, the stock one. And so I don't want to ruin the aesthetics of it. And I don't want, so I don't want the two holes drilled through here. The second method is a, a way that Dustin on our team did it. Check out his GitHub. He has a written explanation with photos. So uh, check out his GitHub first if, before deciding which method you want to go with. For me, the method that I prefer is to just cut out the back. That way I just have full access on everything on the inside. Um, I, we're, I'm planning to wrap it up afterwards anyway. So how it looks on the back here doesn't really matter. Here's an example of my other wand I did. As you see, I just went full destructor mode here and I just cut all that out. The one thing that I would have done differently is to leave more surface area along this side here and I'll show you why in a little bit. So using this as a reference, we're gonna wanna cut all this out. And then I would say stop around here. I mean, if I need to remove more afterwards, I will, but yeah, around here is good and leave as much surface on the right here as possible. And like always, using a Dremel will be probably be easiest or at least cleanest, but, um, and I have a Dremel, but I'm not gonna do that because again, I don't know why. I just you wanna minimize the number of tools as possible, just in case some of you guys don't have a Dremel. So instead, we're gonna drill some holes. I'm gonna just go, go ham at it with some snippers. Okay. So I just drilled three holes like that. Uh, front stone tack, phew. And then we're just gonna see how much we can cut off here before we have to maybe drill another hole. So I don't think I'll need to drill any more holes. I'm able to just cut a bit and then bend the piece up and then cut a little bit more, rinse and repeat. Yeah, I don't need that anymore, so I'm just gonna break that off. Okay. You know what, I think that's enough. I think I've exposed enough to do what I need to do. Okay, so that's how that looks inside. And we'll just go ahead and remove the PCB. And you should be able to pull this through the other side. Whoops. We're gonna have to snip it here. We're gonna have to snip the wire. I forgot you can't pull through. Okay, so let's see what we've got now. Um, okay, so I retain a little bit too much here because we're gonna need to get into that little hexagon shape for the fake button there. So we're gonna have to remove a little bit more. So what I just did was I, I cut here, I made like three little tabs. So I cut here, 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 and then at the end, I just lifted each of them up and that made this job a lot easier. And then there, yeah, just, they all just snapped off. Okay, yeah, that's enough clearance. 
That's good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and try this out. See this if this works. All right. So also the great thing about this method, we don't have to do any drilling for this one. <laughs> this is this hole's already done, and we're gonna reuse that hole. The other good thing is we don't need to drill a pilot hole and try to figure out the center of this piece because if you see this little hexagon shaped here, there's already a hole right there. So we can just go ahead and follow through with that. And for that, we're gonna need a quarter inch drill bit. If you want, you can just snip off this little nub here first, but I'm just gonna go at it. So again, see that hole? Lines up perfectly with your drill. I'm gonna slowly make sure we do this okay. There, drill perfectly center. <laughs> it's still stuck on it. Yeah, nice and clean. And then snip off the fake hex nut. Snip off as much as you can, get as flat as you can. Okay, so let's install the hat light first. So you got your hat light. And you got the bottom insert these will go like that and the led will drop right in there before we do that just a disclaimer when i was you know testing things out and making sure everything fit this thing fit into the stock hole here perfectly however since then um I went with the heat shrink wrapping and i had to use a heat gun on it it warped some of the stuff a little bit and i'm going to talk about this later so this thing was a little warped and right now, as I look at the circle, it looks perfectly round. It looks like it didn't wasn't affected by the heat, but this thing is not fitting in perfectly. However, in my other one, when I tested it out, it did fit perfectly. So I do think maybe that my hole here got a little warped from the heat gun. That's not something you should worry about because you're doing the heat gun stuff later on if you choose to. But how? So I just want to let you know that. Um, off camera, I was just, when I realized it didn't fit, all I had to do was just file the edges just a little bit. Like that. And I'm just gonna fit, try to do a test fit from top. Yeah, and then that just fit in. So just wanna let you know, so I just wanna be open about that. If for a reason this doesn't fit, cause I only got two wands. If I had a third one, maybe I would, that's, you know, hasn't been tampered with. I would try that to make sure that it does fit on all the wands. But since I only got two, I just want to make sure to let you guys know about that before you go ahead and try it yourself. And for the test base, um, you might find that this might go on pretty snug, so it might not come off easily. So it's up to you how, how much you want to test it out, but I'm just going to put in that much and it looks all right. I'm just going to go ahead and go with it because I don't want this to be stuck in there and I won't be able to remove it. And then these snap in together. Um, if you're if the super glue isn't holding this down on from the side too much, I wouldn't worry about it. The most important thing is that these two pieces that sandwich together are connected and that'll hold everything in place. So this feels like really tight together. I'm not even worried if these are glued down or not. But yeah, I can spin mine. <laughs> My mine wasn't glued down properly. But yeah, like I said, the most important thing is these two are are stuck together yeah that should be fine i don't think that's going anywhere okay next let's do the push button so take off the nut insert it from the bottom again if it's, it's a little tight you can always just follow follow it down and if it's still tight i mean you can always just turn it and it'll thread through the plastic and it depends how much you want it to stick out you can remove this spacer here and it looks like that I'm gonna leave mine on and then from the other end just secure it with the nut And then you want, and then put in the LED. And like before, you can just add a dab of super glue or hot glue. So that goes in all the way like that.
Next, take your wires and feed it through the hole. So again, depending how big you made your hole, it might be quite snug to get all the wires through. And then if you can, you can also grab it from this end for now, just to get it through. Okay, and I'm just gonna push this through back and to so we can grab it from the other side so getting this wire through this hole is a little tricky what i'm doing here is and what you can do is take a piece of string i'm just going to try using the old wire here instead And I'm going to tie it to the end of one of the wires. Like that. And then on this side, we're going to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, and we'll pull about halfway down the tube. And then we're going to try to pull it through there. Just like that. Oh, that worked. Perfect, awesome. Okay. All right, last one. Oh, that one came out <laughs> super easy. That one was the easiest one of all, and I thought that would be the hardest since it's the last one and it's getting really packed over there. that's it on that side there okay next take your four wires here and you're gonna put it through the hole where the fake uh, wire used to be all right so it's up to you how much wire you want sticking out take a look at some reference folds I think it was something like this is okay and then the final piece that we need to modify is we're going to need to make a little groove right here for the wires to go under. So be careful not to break these posts off. They're very important. Yep, so that's the that's how that looked. And I'm gonna give it a test. Yeah, it looks like it's just enough room for all the wires to sit in. So let's close this back up. Double check that see if everything sits flush when it's like that. So that looks good there. The wires look like they're got some clearance in there. It's going underneath. I don't feel any uh, pressure or anything. And of course I'm an idiot and I put this one on backwards. And let's just go ahead and secure the barrel so it doesn't go flying off. All right, and take the rest of the wires and you can feed it through the one cage here. Okay, so in the video here, as you can see, these wires are quite long. I will make sure that these are shorter for when you guys get your kit. And then going back to the top of the body, make sure take these wires. And at the same time, uh, the body LED wires might be a little bit too short. So I'll make sure that to lengthen these. So. Hey, pretend these are longer, they'll most likely go under and I'll probably have them come up this way. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna have them come up uh, through the little slit here. 
Okay, next, fish out these three JSTPH housings. And uh, why don't we start with, um, why don't we start with the top body LED first? So for this one, the yellow is considered positive. The black will be negative. And when we're looking at this in this orientation with the slit facing up, the right side will be positive and the, ne and the left side will be negative. So all you gotta do is take your little wire here Actually, you know what? I'm just going to demonstrate over here so I can get closer to the camera. So for this one, red is positive, black is negative. So if you look at it like this, okay? This is going to go in um, this way. So we're going to have this facing down. So the back side is now facing the camera or facing up. And this side here is facing like that. And and push it in there's a very tiny little tab at the top here and that's what is holding it preventing it from coming out so just double check is that is positive on the right yes then let's finish with the black one okay so now that you know how it's done i'm gonna go ahead and put the yellow one into the positive and make sure it's on the right side so i'm gonna look at it this way and it's on the right, so black goes on the left. And then for the blue one, this is the momentary switch button. It doesn't matter which one goes into which. Okay. Just give them a, a light tug to make sure they don't come off. It's all good. Okay, and then we go ahead and plug these in. So starting with the top body LED, this goes into hat two, which is right, which is right here. And then, so this one will go into hat one, which is right next to it. And then the momentary switch button that goes over here at the very end. And now that those are connected and assuming you didn't unplug anything else from the board, just leave the wave trigger and the speaker off for now. Go check out your pack, plug it in, and make sure that the hat lights and the momentary switch button are still working. So go do that and then come back to this video. Okay, for the final step, we need to wrap this up. There's gonna be two ways to do this. The first way and the easiest way is to get some electrical tape. The one I have here is one and a half inch, which looks like, which is like the perfect size for this. So you cut a bit off. So the first thing to do is um, I would put the center around where uh, the light and buttons are and then just mark where they are. And I mean, if you've got like a, a hole puncher or something, you can use that. I'm just gonna go at it with some snippers. Okay, I'm just gonna poke a hole first, get it started. Okay, whatever, I'm just gonna give that a try. So it's up to you how big you want the hole to be. There's no accurate, there's no one way to doing this. Um, any, if you watch, if you look at reference photos, they're all kind of done differently, depending which one you're looking at. And then unfortunately, because of this wooden grip is molded to this piece here. We can't just simply wrap around. So we're just gonna cut the slit there. And now just go around to the other side here. And this side just wraps around as well. And then Cut off the excess. I cut off a little too much, but you get the idea. So yeah, I cut off too much, a little too much of mine's a little stretched out, but you get the idea. That's how it works. Um, sure, this is not an accurate way, but this is the most, this is the easiest way to do this. 
and is forgiving. If you make mistakes, you can just untangle it, do it again. Um, I know it's a little shiny, but from my experience, I've actually did this method and I actually took my pack out for an event. And um, once this gets dirty, it looks a lot better. It's shiny now. You can just dirty it up on purpose if you want. And then you, after a while, I, like, I was fine with it, to be honest. Like it wasn't, it's not, I have the, the accurate heat shrink wrapping, but when I did this to my wand, um, I was I was okay with it. So yeah, that's method number one. Now method number two, and I'm gonna demonstrate it on my other wand. This one is gonna be tricky. So here is um, one and a quarter inch marine grade heat shrink wrapping. It's a three to one ratio. So when you heat it up, it will shrink to about a third of this. Unfortunately, with this method, you will have to get a heat gun. A lighter doesn't work. Hair dryer doesn't work. I've tried, I've tested it out. A heat gun is essential to this piece. And the other tricky part about this method that you have to be careful about if you want to do it is that the heat will deform this plastic if you leave it on too long. So let me show you this one I did, test it out. You can see up here. You can see up here, there's a bit of curvature at the top piece. And if you look at my uh, push button here, that, that just totally got warped. As you can see, this one wasn't as bad. This one was still operational, but it did get warped a little bit as well. And here is the original hat light. It came out okay for the most part, but it did get warped a little bit. So we're gonna have to be very careful with this approach. So take your heat shrink wrapping and you're gonna wanna have a center like that with the, um, e the folded edges right along the axis there. And then we're gonna have to cut off a little bit here, but you don't wanna do it exactly along this line because this will shrink. You wanna have a bit of excess. So if you look at this one here, I basically put it in and I just cut off a little bit. And if you wanna push all the way down, and see it overlaps there and it overlaps here. This will shrink once you heat it up. Take your pen and try to feel out roughly where your buttons are. And again, if you want to make a perfect circle, I don't know, you might need a, a hole puncher of some sort, maybe like a, a leather hole puncher. Or if you don't really care, you just go ahead and cut away. But the thing you gotta be careful about is, cut the hole smaller than you want it to be. Because again, this will shrink. And then when we cut a hole, this will tear away at it. So you wanna cut it smaller. So let's just see what we got here first. That's a little, I maybe cut a little bit more on off the orange hat light. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna rock it with this and see how it goes. So just for reference, the hole I cut, it looks like it just uh, perfectly around the top part of the hat light. And for the button, might cut off a little bit too much off that side, but yeah, it mostly just wraps around that. So let's see how much this shrinks. So you can use this video as a reference guide to see how much you can cut uh, based off how much this shrinks when I hit it up. All right, some rules. Do not heat up one spot for too long. Try to keep it moving as much as you can. If you end up heating up one spot for too long and you feel, oh no, I might have, it might be a little too much, just stop and let it cool down and then continue on again afterwards. When we're heating around these spots, grab something to, uh, you know, maybe block it. So if I'm heating around this side of the hat light, I'm just taking a paper bag. I'm probably gonna try to uh, block the hat light as much as I can, cover it up so that at least the bag might absorb some of the heat. And I'm gonna do the same with the momentary switch. So, all right, let's see how this goes, all right? Mm. 
you see it tightening up i see as soon as i see this piece start shrinking i'm gonna stop okay i'm just gonna mold it in a little bit oh yeah i forgot to mention that there is a adhesive on the inside of these heat shrinks and they get activated once you apply heat to it so that will make our job easier because this should stick oh and i also should mention this is why um this is why i wanted you to have as much uh surface here left over as much as possible so that we can stick this part of the heat of the heat shrink to um, the surface there so that part's okay so let's go ahead and uh hmm, what should we do next all right let's just complete the back side so i'm gonna do this part here and maybe the sides a little bit Careful when you touch it, it is hot. Okay, I'm just gonna let this cool down for a bit. Okay, so I let this cool down a little bit. And before I do the sides, actually, I'm just gonna try to do the front now. So I'm gonna be quick about this and try not to risk deforming anything more. Doesn't feel too warm. I think it might have done a good enough job of blocking the heat. I actually might skip the middle part here. You know what? It looks fine. I don't think that needs to shrink or anything. But I do suggest you be careful about the monte switch. You don't want to warp this button here. So let's go give that this one a try. Okay. As soon as I start to see it curling up, I'm gonna stop. Okay, so it looks like I can go a little bit more. Okay, so starting to curl even more, and I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and shove that into the little crevice there. All right, so it looks like I could have. Uh, Shrunk it just a little bit more for it to be more flushed. Okay, but you know, I don't mind. I think that's all right. We'll finish up the other side. that looks all right other than this little piece that probably could have shrunk a little bit more i might take a knife and see if i can cut that off the rest of it looks like it shrunk that's not bad that's pretty good i'm actually i'm actually pretty happy with this um just some things i noticed um i guess this because maybe because i was covering the edge it didn't tear away as much as i thought it would um in the past they have teared this hole has teared apart a lot more and this side as well so here's for your own reference. Just remember how much it cut and how much it looked before I put in the heat shrink and how it looks afterwards using the technique I did. And again, for comparison. Whoops. Ignore that part. And again, once the electrical tape gets dirty, the shine goes down and it starts looking a lot more like this one. It has a more matte look to it. Um, uh, but yeah, that's it. Okay, once you've tested out the wand and everything's working, you can go ahead and close him up. And then the last thing to do is just 
um, tape out the wires here with some electrical tape. And that's it. Thanks for watching.